there it is, a beautiful sight as S Hail 2 floats away again well, to provide we'll communications from, from geostationary orbit. Today was a wonderful day. Uh, we'd like to extend a great thanks to our customer, S Hailsat, for entrusting us with today's mission. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you the Mini Tuner version 2. Now, this is technically a digital TV receiver, but it's been specifically designed to be used with ham radio. Now, the reason for this is that it supports very low symbol rates, which most terrestrial satellite receivers are not able to achieve. Now, the goal of this project is to build a receiver which can receive digital amateur television from the QO100 satellite. However, this will also work with any DVBS or DVBS2 transmissions within its frequency range. For example, that TV repeaters on 1.2 gigahertz. Now, unfortunately, the Mini Tuner version 2 is not an off the shelf product. Well, at least the time of making this video. However, I think it's quite exciting building something and then seeing it work. So in order to build one, you first need to acquire the PCB. Now this is sold on the BATC web shop in which you do have to be a member to be able to purchase from their website. Luckily, it's pretty easy to become a member. Also from the BATC online shop, I purchased the Serif tuner and a pre-programmed USB mini module. However, you can purchase these items online if you can find them. Now the rest of the components I ordered was from DigiKey, and although it looks like there's a lot of components here, there's not actually that many. So the first part of getting this project working was to build the board. So I set out one evening and installed most of the flat components first, like resistors, diodes, and ICs. Now as the build progressed, I started to add the larger components like capacitors, filters, headers, and then lastly, the tuner. So once built, it's worth just checking all your soldering to make sure that when you first power it on, it's not gonna go up in a puff of smoke. Now this isn't really a full build video, but I will mention one thing that you need to remember. Do not connect jumper two until you've set the voltage of that little buck converter. All voltages and specifications are available in the build document available on the BATC wiki page. Now I'll link that below for those that are interested. So with everything built, it was time to align my 85 centimeter dish at the end of the garden. Now I loosely positioned it towards QO100 and with the laptop connected, listening to the narrow band transponder. Once I had this trimmed correctly and was receiving strong NB signals, it was now time to test the receive of the wide band transponder where I'm gonna find these digital amateur television transmissions. Now at this point, I've not put the mini tuner into its box, but that's a project for another day. So here I have a 12 volt input powering the board along with a USB cable, which goes off to my computer. The cable that comes from the satellite has an 18 volt bias TN line. Now this provides power to the LMB and tells it to use horizontal polarization that we need for the wideband transponder. Incidentally, I'm using the Bullseye LMB, which is an absolutely amazing and cheap LMB for using with QO100. As mentioned before, this is not really a setup video, more of a demonstration on what you can do with it. So if you would like a more in-depth video of configuration, both hardware and software, then let me know in the comments below. The software that we need to use is called Mini Tuner, which can be downloaded free of charge from the internet. Now F6DZP has done a fantastic job of this software and it works really well. However, I will mention there is a process you have to follow for the software to work correctly. Now these are all listed on the website. So as you can see on the screen, I'm receiving the QO100 wideband beacon and it's being demodulated perfectly. Now on the right side of the screen, you can see a web browser open showing the wideband SDR from BATC website. Now this shows in real time what transmissions are taking place on the satellite. This makes it nice and easy to retune the mini tuner to another transmission as this shows frequency and symbol rate. You'll notice that the higher the symbol rate, the wider the signal bandwidth. And this is why amateurs like low symbol rates because we can support more transmissions at the same time through the transponder. Now tuning to another transmission is fairly easy. Using the numeric keypad at the top left, you can enter frequency. 
It doesn't have to be dead on as the Minitune software will perform a scan either side of the frequency so it can get a lock. Indicators on the bottom of the software show things like carrier detection, symbol rate lock and received RF power. Once the Minitune software has a lock, all of the software LEDs will turn green and you should start to see video and hear any audio that's being broadcast. Now this particular transmission was playing music, so I've muted it. Others that use the wideband transponder for video will broadcast a whole range of content, whether it's a photo slideshow or just a webcam pointing at themselves while talking to other viewers via the online chat or maybe two people are transmitting and they're just viewing each other's streams. You'll also come across transmissions where just a test card is being transmitted. Now this makes it easy for hardware builders to test the quality of their transmission. Well, there we go, guys. That's the Mini Tuner version two and demonstrated working with QA100. Now let me know below if you guys use this solution for receiving DAT TV from QA100 or what other types of hardware you use. I'll be interested to see if there's any other solutions, but this one does seem to be the most popular at the moment. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.